Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you all for attending this event, even uh, remotely. Uh, before starting the panel, I would like to heartily uh, thank uh, all those that made this possible. Uh, of course, our prestigious university, as you know, we have a very important scientific and cultural heritage. And uh, I would like to thank personally uh, the Rector Magnificus, Professor uh, Rosario Rizzuto, and uh, the directors of the uh, uh, Department of Mathematics and Department of uh, Information Engineering, uh, Professor uh, Chiarellotto and Professor Menegesso. And uh, at the same time, I would like also to thank all the colleagues and also uh, the admin staff that helped uh, uh, throughout this uh, long uh, process to set up a new master degree. So uh, today is somehow, uh, somehow a celebration of this uh, success. I mean, we, we, we made it, we, we set up our new master degree, but it's also the beginning of a new journey. And uh, I would like to thank all of our prestigious speakers uh, that we have in our panel that uh, further underlines how it is important, uh, this event and uh, also the education, the high level education in, uh, in cybersecurity. Thank you uh, for all the panelists uh, for accepting our invitation. Uh, our panelists uh, are going to discuss uh, challenges and opportunities that they see in the cybersecurity uh, area, and of course, uh, including uh, the need of, again, uh, high uh, education uh, or highly prepared uh, people uh, for this kind of uh, job. Uh, so uh, this is the list of uh, prestigious speakers I'm pleased and honored uh, to have today uh, with us. Uh, from the government institutions, we have uh, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Salvatore Farina, Chief of State of the Italian Army. Uh, we have uh, Professor Roberto Baldoni, Deputy Director General and Head of Cybersecurity, Department of Information for Security of the Italian Presidency for the Council of Ministers. Uh, we have Isabella Fusiello, Police uh, Commissioner of Padova, uh, and Sergio Russo, Head of the Postal and Communication uh, Police Department for Veneto. From uh, also industry, we have uh, a set of uh, very important uh, representatives, uh, starting with uh, Barbara Poggiali, Managing Director uh, of the Cybersecurity Division of uh, Leonardo Company, uh, Alfio Rapisarda, Senior Vice President Security of ENI, uh, Fabio Goste, Head of Cybersecurity and Business Continuity Management of and Group Information Security Officer of Intesa San Paolo, uh, uh, and uh, Riccardo Barrile, Chief Information Security Officer of uh, Ferrovie dello Stato Italiano. So I would not take uh, more time. Uh, again, I'm very pleased and honored to have as our first speaker, General uh, Salvatore Farina, Chief of the Italian Army, and I would leave him the floor. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Conti. Uh, good morning to everyone. I'm very happy, honored to be here. I uh, greet all the future students, uh, all the uh, distinguished guests, all my fellow panelists as well. And uh, let me uh, just uh, make a particular greet uh, to Dr. Renato Franceschelli, the Prefect of Padua, and in particular to the Rector, Professor Rosario Rizzuto. And uh, thank you, uh, Professor, thank you, Rector, for uh, inviting me to this very, very important uh, event. Uh, I am very honored, I have to say uh, from scratch, uh, there are two main reasons because I am very honored to be part of this uh, panel. First, uh, the Padua University is the only Italian university to be awarded by, uh, with the military gold medal uh, that uh, just was awarded for uh, the fact of uh, uh, contributing to the liberation of Italy in uh, uh, the year 43-45. Uh, and, uh, and thank you for that. And second thing that I am very pleased with a little bit of emotion, I have to say that Padua is my university. Uh, I, uh, I've been a student for uh, more than 15 years, one five. So I was grown up uh, already commander, young commander, when I decided to uh, registered to enroll in uh, Padua University. It took me around 15 years. My registration number is uh, still there, I think, 191888. Uh, so, and I remember uh, from, uh, uh, you know, just the beginning, how happy uh, uh, were I just when I uh, usually met uh, uh, young students, uh, great professors, and my spirits, 
uh, although I grew up, uh, you know, with the, you know, year after year, step by step, because I, I, I used to be an officer and a commander. So in the free time, I used to study engineering, electric engineering, but I was completely inspired by the innovation spirit, by the, 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 the research for doing better, looking at the future, planning for the future. That was, and I think still is the spirit of the university to think great and to think to the future for the benefit of all the humankind and also, of course, of the Italian nation. So with this kind of innovation spirit, I would like to introduce this uh, on my intervention that uh, to give you uh, some, uh, uh, you know, just information at a glance about the cyber uh, uh, situation, cyber uh, uh, just organization and uh, uh, problems and solution within the defense in the Italian army and uh, in, in the, generally speaking in the military uh, environment, but also uh, uh, looking at the, the, the Italian uh, organization. So this is, of course, uh, an immaterial domain, you know, and uh, also is absolutely important sector uh, to uh, all the civilian and also military. So it's a, a comprehensive kind of uh, a domain that is a force or capability better multiply and uh, allow uh, now us to be uh, at distance connected very well, allow to speed up process to make things faster and uh, to do many things better to connect globally. And uh, of course, this involves civilian, uh, military, all kinds, industrial wars, every, everyone, and the benefits are enormous. At the same time, the dark side of the medal, the other side of the medal, uh, is also uh, to be considered uh, that it is possible as uh, in the future, as it is in the past, uh, that some malicious uh, kind of uh, elements, organization, even, you know, possibly also state organization or non-state organization, single actors can conduct attack privately or organized attack against uh, uh, an institution, against private people and so on. So this is very important and we have example. Uh, sometime in the past, uh, pressure was made uh, to state, interstate pressure by deploying force, by make deterrence, by uh, moving uh, force or just uh, conducting attack. Uh, now we have seen just to take into account uh, the Ukrainian crisis that uh, has been very much uh, involved in, uh, uh, in 2014 and then again in 17 by uh, a variety of actors uh, uh, to uh, attack with the malware and also to cause uh, uh, you know, damage not only on government election and so on, but also to the private industrial uh, with the damage of billion of dollars. As well, uh, the Iran uh, kind of uh, attack uh, uh, and damage of the Iran uh, nuclear facilities, uh, uh, this was uh, also uh, some years ago conducted in order to uh, decelerate or to neutralize uh, very much the uh, production of uh, enriched uranium and so on. These are two examples but it's not to be considered to be used in isolation, but to be used in a composition of system uh, of uh, a kind of uh, actions that can uh, also offend a single people or the, the organization. So uh, to be short, I think that we need a comprehensive uh, a civilian military of just involving all the components of our society, but also a, a international kind of uh, cooperation to be able to understand better and to solve and to exploit opportunity together for the positive on the reverse to be stronger together in order to be more resilient to any any attack and then the italian <clears throat> organization uh, it is uh, i think very well known and <clears throat> in the year 2000 we started as well as nato uh, the alliance, uh, our uh, main alliance, uh, the North Atlantic uh, uh, organization uh, started, we started to think about, to focus on the problem uh, since 2002, NATO, and we started to uh, just uh, uh, study the, the, the new domain. Uh, and then we uh, ended up uh, in uh, uh, 10 years later uh, with the uh, 
the so-called multi-degree uh, uh, de decrease uh, is a law that uh, uh, just uh, uh, depicted the present organization, the structure of the, the cyber system in Italy. It is a system that is uh, uh, just steered by the prime minister, the president of the uh, Consiglio dei Ministri, and each minister uh, has his own organization. And there is also a, a series of uh, uh, committee, but also a computer and cyber emergency response team and coordination to each kind of uh, uh, minister. Uh, in the defense, we are according to the NATO directives and also European directives and to the Italian directives, we are organized uh, uh, since I think uh, uh, eight years ago in uh, uh, the defense organization with a, a, a command and a quarter, it's a small quarter, a command that coordinates all the uh, uh, joint uh, operation in cyber domain, mostly oriented to the defense and to the control and to the management of uh, uh, incident and also emergency uh, kind of uh, situation. So this is uh, at the defense staff, but also at, army, at the army level. And within the Italian army, we have uh, this organization uh, just uh, coming down from the top to the single units that are even deployed in operation. So we, uh, there is a double kind of uh, uh, element of uh, monitoring and quick response to incident that is uh, connected with a unit deployed on the field and with a national, uh, let's say, network that connect all the army uh, a quarter, the defense a quarter as well. So this is a, a, is a kind of a, a things that we need and we are organized. We have a unit that used to be signal unit, uh, uh, electronic warfare signal unit. Now they are also cyber unit and they are prepared to protect our uh, net uh, communication uh, and uh, to also be ready to respond and to uh, neutralize any, any attack. Uh, and this is uh, something, that, something that it is uh, every day monitored, every day possibly reinforced. And it's uh, an all uh, kind of a sector, joint interministerial effort. And I would like to say something about uh, the present and the future environment. Uh, I think that uh, the modern uh, way of conducting any kind of activity, but let's focus on the defense uh, sector uh, in the future, uh, we have seen al already, uh, we can see a conventional attack. We can see, uh, you know, platform, aircraft, uh, ships moving and also making something uh, and also uh, kinetically or not. But we will not see uh, physically the many uh, attempt to neutralize, to enter, to get information and to uh, be pervasive in our network. This would cause a great deal of damage. Can uh, we imagine? in the environment that we live now, in our cities, big cities. Uh, so there are uh, situations that could be social arrest, could be terrorist attack, could be anything. And that there is the necessity, the requirement for a force being police or being army or defense to control, to make peace or to uh, monitor. And then how can we be connected? How can we defend against attack uh, in the cyber domain, in the communication, command and control and everything? So we have developed a, a, a kind of a, a vision for, uh, it's not for the future in, uh, we call the, the future of operation environment uh, uh, 2035. We have uh, uh, the honor to present these on the 5th of December. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Meneghesso and uh, Professor Meregatti that were present in Rome. And so there was uh, a, a, the introduction of this uh, a, a kind of problem because it's a problem 
for the future, but it's also a problem for the present, that we are, are trying to uh, make a new paradigm, a kind of modern way of connecting, protecting our force that could be able to command, control, to explore, to neutralize, to do many actions in a, a very complex environment, in a big cities or in a humanized kind of environment. This is a, a challenge for the future. Think about it, that we have uh, mini drones going on, they are remotely controlled, we have uh, a communication, a global positioning system, uh, we have uh, a satellite communication, we have radio, we have uh, any kind of thing, internet and so on, how the commander uh, could be able to uh, decide having all the information required and not any interference or even the line cut for hours or uh, a black out for uh, days that could happen uh, if any kind of uh, attack is against our civilian also installation. So this is the big problem that we have posed and I think that this is one way to work together and uh, there are many uh, working groups that we are uh, uh, conducting. Unfortunately, the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic just uh, uh, stopped a little bit us to, 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 to uh, proceed very quickly, but we are now starting again. And this is, uh, uh, in practical terms, one way of uh, just uh, dealing with the problem. The other uh, way is uh, a constant education and training education and training of the present uh, uh, elements that we have uh, in the army. We, uh, two years ago, uh, I decided to constitute a, a, a unit called the, the Cyber Defense Unit. Uh, this is uh, uh, very uh, uh, interesting to, to understand that uh, we just uh, uh, enrolled young people uh, capable. Uh, they had uh, many uh, opportunities to, uh, to be formed, to be educated. Uh, we send them also in some uh, uh, industrial research center as well. And uh, we have uh, links with uh, uh, other university uh, in Italy and abroad, other centers that are uh, inside our allies. And in uh, less than two years, with these very smart young guys, we managed to be uh, in the front line of the uh, capability, internationally speaking, because we had some very good results as well. But this is, this is nothing. This is just the beginning. We would like to have the possibility to give a contribution for this, to receive additional training and formation. And I believe that uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, some of the future students of the master uh, or the cyber uh, just uh, uh, security uh, master that uh, is uh, uh, inside now the Padua University uh, will be uh, for sure uh, belonging to uh, the Italian army. I'm very proud to announce this. Uh, if we can, we will be uh, very, very happy to do so. But it is uh, also a continuous uh, process of uh, uh, update, formation, training that it is and should be conducted all together. I would like to uh, underline one more thing before uh, concluding. The importance of single human people, personnel. We speak about you know, some uh, uh, firewall protection uh, with uh, uh, monitoring, with just uh, uh, everything that could uh, give us a, a certain degree of uh, uh, security, uh, re response, protection, neutralization. Uh, we should uh, dedicate very much time to the uh, integrity of the uh, personnel. Uh, the, once that they approach the machine, uh, they are the first to be uh, reliable, to be ethically formed, and also to be loyal. And I think that this is another effort that uh, we, we, should, uh, we should make. And I uh, just uh, uh, go to the conclusion, I'm uh, ready also to uh, answer some, uh, some question, if, uh, if any. I do think that, uh, uh, I had the motto when uh, I still have. So this is, uh, uh, I would say in Italian, uh, noi ci siamo sempre, and the second one, di più insieme. Uh, so it's more together, the second one. I think this more together, uh, it is also a, a kind of uh, a mantra that should uh, inspire all of us 
uh, because this is an effort that uh, could be uh, a winning factor only if all the components of the Italian institution, Italian center of research, university, uh, institution like uh, mine, the defense, army, and so on, they will be synchronized. I think that there are the conditions, there is the law that uh, uh, plays to the uh, President del Consiglio, the Prime Minister organization, and to the Department of the Information Security uh, that uh, Dr. Baldoni may be telling uh, you something more. We have this framework. We should use this uh, alongside the commercial world, the banks, the industry, uh, the uh, manufacturing uh, kind of uh, sector, the research center, the schools, the university, to make a step forward. I think that uh, as uh, was said before, uh, in this very short time, we have the, uh, had the demonstration how much we can do if forced to do in a rapid time with good result. Uh, and uh, this is also an opportunity that we should uh, exploit for the future. Again, thank you uh, to everyone. Uh, a great uh, a salute to the future student. I feel still young. Uh, in my spirit, and I hope this uh, spirit will inform and inspire all the future students, the professor of the university, the great University of Padua. Thank you very much. And also of the NATO. Again, thank you very much, uh, General Farina, for your view uh, about the cybersecurity for the Italian Army, for the NATO, and thanks again also for underlying the importance of people uh, being the front line for the security, even before the technology, which is something we try to address also in our degree. Uh, thanks again for being uh, with, us, with, us, uh, with us today. It's uh, really a great honor. Uh, I would like to make an announcement for uh, those that are attending the event uh, through uh, YouTube. If you want to ask a question, you can use the uh, YouTube uh, chat and we'll try to, to get your question and, uh, and pass it on to the, uh, to the panelists. Uh, I didn't see questions so far, so also we have a bit uh, in short on time. So meanwhile, I will uh, move on uh, with our next uh, speaker, which is uh, Professor Baldoni. Deputy Director General and uh, Head of Cybersecurity, Department of Information for Security of the Italian Presidency of the Council of Ministers. Professor Bardoni, the floor is yours. Okay, good. So I was uh, chair at the, um, uh, of the uh, Engineering in Computer Science uh, uh, course and actually was the first time where uh, uh, we moved uh, in Sapienza University uh, a class uh, and uh, actually a course uh, in English language. So that's why it's always a pleasure for me uh, to see that there are many other, uh, uh, you know, courses uh, all around Italy that are following this kind of approach. And the second, uh, why I'm very happy about this, is that uh, uh, here we are celebrating a new uh, course in cybersecurity. And uh, why this is very important uh, for, uh, for the nation. Uh, I heard General Farina that uh, state uh, very, uh, a lot of very important notion that I completely subscribe, uh, but the main point uh, is that uh, we need actually in Italy much more expertise in cybersecurity with respect to technicians, with respect to research, with respect to uh, the academic uh, environment in general. So that's why every time we see a new uh, diploma that starts in this domain, so it's a very good news uh, for, uh, for our country. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, filling the gap of expertise, uh, it's uh, an imperative that uh, we need 
uh, in any country actually, not only in Italy, this is uh, uh, a huge problem in any Western country. So uh, this is why I think university are looking promisingly to this uh, specific uh, field. But on the other end, the cybersecurity is so impacting in the everyday life that what I could expect uh, uh, at the time you will be graduated uh, is that uh, uh, you know the uh, opportunity for working and uh, for doing career uh, and uh, excellent career in this domain will just amplify in the in the next future. Uh, if you think at cybersecurity at the large, uh, I mean, uh, it's so impacting in any any of the activity that we run every day. Um, if we con just consider, for example, that uh, less than uh, six months ago, uh, the government uh, uh, issued uh, a specific bill on uh, cybersecurity namely the perimetro di uh, sicurezza nazionale cibernetica which actually go to define a perimeter uh, within which putting and listing assets ICT assets that are actually the base of our economy of our national security more in general so uh, this is to testify that, uh, I mean, if we compare to 10 years ago, all the activity that are underpinning the economy, underpinning the social activity in any country, is actually uh, built on a digital infrastructure. And this has been amplified also by the uh, COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, that move on the cyberspace most of the work and i think that also in the future uh, we will go to see more and more working from home rather than uh, you know what we ever uh, what we ever seen in the past so from this perspective uh, our field uh, has been enlarged a lot so coming back to the uh, bill on the perimeter for national security, uh, I think this is uh, really a turnaround point because we are actually saying that uh, if you have an ICT asset that is underpinning some essential function of the state, uh, this has to be, you know, in the perimeter, so to be compliant at very strong security measures. Uh, and of course, this creates the ground for uh, you know opportunities of uh, uh, of different kind uh, research uh, in principle because we need to have in the perimeter definitely uh, let's say cut edging technologies in order to uh, best defend with respect to the attacker. Uh, for technicians from the point of view of uh, how to maintain, how to establish this security measure. Uh, we need a lot of, uh, you know, uh, expertise and of different kind uh, around this thing. And never forget that uh, cybersecurity is a sport team. Of course, technicians are, let's say, uh, at the center of this world, but you cannot do anything if you don't have a very good legal expert, uh, psychologist, uh, you know, sociologist, and all this kind of, uh, um, you know, expertise specifically on cybersecurity that give the added value to the uh, overall picture. So I would expect plenty of, op of opportunity <clears throat> In the future, I would expect a great career, and I hope that many of you will do this career. Uh, I'm talking, of course, to uh, prospective students, uh, or will do most of this career in Italy. Um, so, my role 
uh, in the Italian administration, uh, in the Italian government, uh, is actually the one of the coordinator of the uh, cybersecurity defense. So, which is quite interesting because uh, uh, I was, uh, you know, professor in computer science. At a certain point, I was picked up and put in at the forefront of these uh, uh, big, big issues, as Generale Farina said, uh, that needs coordination, that needs, uh, you know, uh, answer that have to be horizontal with respect to all the different part of the economy of the society and uh, uh, i think that in these two years uh, since i i was in charge uh, italy did uh, uh, so many progress uh, that i really i'm really proud and happy about it um, we achieved uh, one more than one year ago uh, to uh, the um, uh, delivering of the NIS um, uh, directive that has been uh, accepted by the Italian uh, law. It has been, uh, you know, the first big step that actually uh, arrived in June uh, 2018. And uh, I was so happy that after six months, we were at the head of the uh, European nation with the implementation state of this directive, which means that uh, we took the sector that were included in the NIS directive. Um, uh, I can mention energy, uh, there is... Uh, uh, watering, uh, there is uh, uh, finance, uh, uh, there is, uh, you know, all this kind of sector. Uh, and uh, we were able to write uh, security guidelines for each of the sector. And now we are in the phase of starting inspection in order to see if the, um, what we call uh, uh, essential services of a country uh, respect uh, the security measure that we impose uh, uh, during the implementation of the law. Um, and again, we are really in the front line with Germany uh, and with uh, other smaller countries. Uh, and for us, uh, you know, starting really, uh, I want to say from scratch, but you know, we we didn't have a deep understanding here of what's going on in the cybersecurity issue till 2016. I think we did a big step. Now, just to give you an idea of what we are doing at the EU level, uh, we are actually proposing together with France a new uh, architecture for handling uh, large scale incident uh, that is uh, uh, based on a specific point of control, uh, operative control, that is done between, in the between the, the, uh, the CIRT network, which is the one in which you exchange uh, technical information, and the political uh, network, that is the one uh, that uh, is uh, being done in, Brus in Brussels when you have uh, uh, large-scale incident happening. So we are actually proposing more and more things at the EU level that are, uh, uh, let's say, that comes from our experience in assembling and developing the national cybersecurity architecture. So from this perspective, uh, I would expect uh, in the future, uh, you know, uh, an enlarge of uh, uh, employment uh, in the field. I would expect an enlarge of research opportunity in the field. We want definitely to uh, establish, uh, and we have a specific sector that does this inside the uh, organization that I am proud to lead, uh, that look at how to put together research and uh, um, industry and academia 
and we do this for the entire uh, system country. So the organization to which I belong, which is DIS, the Department of uh, Information Security, as one was mentioned before by uh, Mauro, is actually you know, coordinating all the activities 360 degrees uh, uh, around cybersecurity. So starting from uh, how to uh, put together all the effort and going in the same direction with all the uh, organization of Italy, then we also look at how to, uh, you know, enforce the cooperation uh, uh, with industry and academia, and I think that uh, uh, we had a lot of success, and uh, certainly the system country of Italy uh, is now moving uh, in the uh, same direction in any international table uh, where we are uh, involved in. So it's important to uh, you know, understand uh, where did we start, it's important to understand the path that we want to follow, it's important to go into our objectives, create objectives, and what is our objective is to create a coordinated cyber defense system, because, uh, you know, we, we really need to uh, play together, there cannot be a single organization that is able to answer to a, a huge attack that, uh, you know, uh, we try to be ready uh, to respond to. Uh, all the organization has to cooperate uh, deeply uh, in order to assure that the Italian economy at the large would be able to, uh, you know, evolve uh, to be more resilient uh, to uh, this kind of new world that we actually see very clear uh, in the future and uh, but we are already now involved uh, completely involved so it's important to uh, you know uh, start this uh, new uh, course with a big enthusiasm uh, it will be, from my perspective, very exciting. Uh, I am, I, I mean, when I was uh, in my previous appointment uh, as a researcher, uh, I was so excited to study this kind of problems where, you know, you, you need to be stronger than an attacker and to try to figure out how to uh, create resilient infrastructure in order that the adversary will be able to, or us to spend a lot of uh, effort and resources in order to break the system. And, uh, you know, when you, you, you are able to uh, define, you know, a specific algorithm, or you are able to uh, define a specific theory with theorems and uh, that are able to show theoretically and uh, let's say from an engineering point of view that uh, your algorithm, your architecture, your system uh, is able to resist to such a strong attack, uh, it's a big achievement. It's a big achievement not only for you, it's a big achievement for, for the country because we show that, you know, we are able to produce things that are important for the world. I was, for example, very happy of the fact of hearing that yesterday we were one of the first country of the world to launch uh, this contact tracing app. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a good sign, respecting all the privacy issues as also witnessed by, by the, uh, the data protection officer of Italy. So all this uh, make me optimist uh, with respect to the future. We need uh, an Italy that is able to innovate, that is not stuck in any uh, you know, kind of uh, um, 
uh, how I can say, a political querel or, uh, you know, uh, stuck in things uh, or deadlocked in things that no one understands. It's important to show that Italy is ready to accept the challenge of the future. Uh, of course, the challenge of the future is uh, digital space, but in order to have a digital space where you can really uh, put inside an economy that is able to develop in a safe way, you need professional of cybersecurity. This is true now, this will be true in the future. So what I want to, uh, to tell is that uh, first I want to thank my colleagues of the University of Padua for realizing this uh, new experience for uh, students at the University of Padua. Uh, and, uh, you know, I will be very happy to support uh, uh, any action in order to uh, improve the number of students that uh, uh, will go to attend this class. Because again, huge opportunity for career, uh, very challenging, uh, topic and uh, I want to say two last things. Uh, first, uh, try to involve women as much as you can. This is one of the big issues that uh, we have uh, not only at Italian level but also at, uh, uh, you know, it is something present in any uh, Western country that I share with my colleagues. Uh, uh, we cannot lose uh, half of the potential, the perspective candidate uh, for some strange reason. We really want women working, engaging in cybersecurity uh, in order to make our nation safer. Uh, the second thing is that, uh, you know, our uh, department uh, is fully engaged with the programs with the university uh, and especially we support uh, um, the um, uh, Cyber Challenge program, which is actually a program for uh, uh, cyber security that starts uh, involving young talent from 16 to 22 uh, years old. I think that Padua, I'm sure, is definitely inside this uh, specific uh, program. And for us, uh, this is very important because it's a way to uh, direct uh, workforce inside uh, diplomas, new diplomas like the one that Padua is doing. And I did this in Rome as my last job uh, inside the Sapienza University before uh, joining this new position at the Department of Information Security. And, uh, you know, uh, from this perspective, I know the effort that all the professors there are, uh, you know, uh, doing and are spending in order to achieve the best, the best result for students. So uh, I want to thank again the rector of the University of Padua that supported this, Mauro and all the other colleagues uh, that are, uh, you know, very strong in the, in, the, in the sector, I'm sure that they will organize a, a great course where you can really improve your capabilities, your expertise, and getting into this new arena where we really need fresh, fresh bodies. That's it. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Roberto, for sharing the view from you and uh, your important, important government organization. And thanks also for your contribution as a, a person from the academia, representative from the academia, for the contribution you are giving now to the uh, national security. And thanks also for underlining uh, the, the need and the effort to, to align uh, and to have more uh, women in, uh, in uh, cyber security. We know this is uh, difficult uh, in general for, for computer science and engineering, and that also applies to, to cyber security. We'll put particularly effort uh, in our uh, new degree. 
thanks a lot. I would now, uh, I would now move uh, to the uh, next uh, speakers. Uh, we have uh, Isabella Fusiello, Police Commissioner of Padua, uh, and together with uh, Sergio Russo, Head of uh, Postal and Communication Police Department for Veneto. Uh, so, benvenuta alla uh, dottoressa Fusiello, uh, questore di Padova, e Sergio Russo, capo della Polizia Postale del Veneto. Buongiorno a tutti, il mio intervento purtroppo sarà in italiano perché ho una conoscenza piuttosto scolastica dell'inglese, quindi me ne scuso per questo. Rivolgo un cordiale saluto al Rettore Professor Rosario Rizzuto e al suo staff per l'iniziativa di oggi tesa a presentare il nuovo corso di laurea in Cyber Security tema quanto mai attuale in una società in continuo cambiamento. Mi piace ricordare una famosa frase di Eraclito quando disse che l'unica costante è il cambiamento. Non poteva certo immaginare che le sue parole sarebbero diventate famose eh, dopo 2500 anni. In effetti i ritmi sono aumentati costantemente, sempre più velocemente nel tempo. Man mano gli investimenti delle aziende in trasformazione digitale aumentano, cresce anche il ritmo del cambiamento, cui devono allinearsi i team IT aziendali, responsabile aziendale che definisce e coordina eh, l'area information and eh, technology di un'impresa. Per gli esperti di cyber security che lavorano in questi ambienti, stare al passo con i cambiamenti può rivelarsi complesso. Ci sono diverse tendenze in atto che possono influenzare sulla sicurezza e tutte possono entrare in gioco in qualsiasi momento e la cyber security riveste ormai da qualche anno un'importanza strategica da tutelare con strumenti efficaci e con elevate professionalità. Non per questo il Dipartimento della Pubblica Sicurezza in ragione dei continui cambiamenti, ha da alcuni anni investito sulle risorse della Polizia di Stato, elevando le professionalità della Polizia delle Comunicazioni attraverso la costante organizzazione di corsi di specializzazione per gli investigatori informatici, affidandosi anche alla collaborazione di prestigiose università e aziende che esercitano la loro attività nel settore dell'information and communication technology. L'evoluzione impressionante della minaccia terroristica informatica sta mettendo a dura prova le reti telematiche e i servizi delle aziende pubbliche e private e ciò impone una stretta sinergia fra tutti gli stakeholders del settore le tipologie degli attacchi sono sempre più sofisticati e i danni causati dagli stessi sempre più ingenti e ciò costringono gli attori a investimenti nel campo della security sempre più rilevanti. Per dare una concreta risposta alla cyber war, la Polizia di Stato ha negli ultimi anni puntato sulla partnership tra le strutture specializzate della Polizia Postale e delle Comunicazioni e i soggetti che offrono servizi essenziali, sia nel pubblico, si pensi al settore della salute, dell'istruzione e degli enti pubblici locali, e che a quello privato, con prevalenza per i settori che offrono servizi di fornitura di energia, acqua, comunicazioni, trasporto e quelle del settore finanziario. I protocolli stipulati hanno consentito di affinare pratica di info sharing, indispensabili per scambiare utilissime informazioni per prevenire in modo efficace gli attacchi dei cyber criminali e migliorare il proprio know-how attraverso dedicati incontri di formazione. La, la sfrenata evoluzione delle reti internet e la completa digitalizzazione degli interlocutori sia nel settore privato che pubblico hanno imposto una completa rivisitazione della strategia per offrire una risposta sempre più qualificata ed efficace alla minaccia cibernetica. E proprio in tale ambito nazionale la metamorfosi si è avuta nel corso degli ultimi anni 
con l'istituzione di un centro nazionale anticrimine informatico per la protezione delle infrastrutture critiche e con la realizzazione a livello regionale anche di nuclei operativi di sicurezza cibernetica che, consente di, che consentono di offrire un'immediata risposta in sede a seguito di attacchi informatici quali APT e simili che causano vere e proprie interruzioni di servizi. Anche sotto l'aspetto normativo rilevante è stata la produzione di provvedimenti che hanno consentito l'allineamento della legislazione italiana a quella emanata in sede europea. Partendo dalla cosiddetta direttiva Network Information Security, recante misure volte a garantire un livello comune elevato di sicurezza delle reti e delle informazioni nell'Unione Europea. E questa è diventata legge nel novembre scorso con l'istituzione di un perimetro di sicurezza nazionale cibernetica. Ne ha già parlato ampiamente il dottor Baldoni. Senza scendere nel dettaglio degli aspetti normativi, è bene far presente che l'attenzione alla materia della sicurezza informatica da parte del legislatore italiano ha avuto un ultimo e importantissimo sussulto nel recente periodo di lockdown, anch'esso caratterizzato da pericolosi rilievi nel settore della sicurezza informatica. E proprio con questo, con provvedimento del 19 maggio, meglio conosciuto come decreto rilancio, è stata istituita la Direzione Centrale per la Sicurezza Cibernetica con il compito di coordinare e di dare impulso alle attività svolte dalla Polizia delle Comunicazioni nel delicatissimo settore strategico della sicurezza delle reti informatiche. Credo infine sia importante sottolineare come la collaborazione avviata nel 2018 tra la Polizia di Stato e l'Università di Padova abbia portato un valore aggiunto nel settore della sicurezza informatica e della formazione a favore di entrambi gli organismi coinvolti. Lo scambio di informazioni utili a prevenire attacchi informatici ha visto gli attori condividere elevati numeri di alert nell'ultimo anno, nel 2019, e analizzare strategie investigative in occasione in alcun, di alcuni eventi che sono stati risolti attraverso questa stretta collaborazione e messa in campo di expertise di alto livello. Frequenti sono state inoltre le partecipazioni di esperti della specialità Polizia Postale e delle Comunicazioni a seminari e incontri per analizzare in forma anonima casi concreti di attacchi informatici ed implementare misure in grado di attuare concrete forme di prevenzione. Concludo con un augurio innanzitutto di buon lavoro e soprattutto ecco, benvengono, voglio dire che benvengono questi corsi di laurea tesi a eh, creare nuove figure professionali che nel futuro saranno fondamentali per le aziende pubbliche e private per la gestione della sicurezza delle reti, visto e considerato, come abbiamo visto nel periodo del Covid, molti dipendenti pubblici, molti, molte aziende private hanno utilizzato lo strumento del, dello smart working e visto e considerato che con un clic oggi Ehm, vengono svolte diverse attività eh, fondamentali eh, nel mondo dell'informatica. Dell Grazie a tutti. Uh, thanks, uh, Isabella Fusiello, again, uh, uh, Police Commissioner of Padova. Uh, I, I understand that Sergio Russo is uh, It's not uh, with you, right? Credo anch'io parlo in italiano, credo abbia già detto tutto il signor Questore. Noi siamo qua e siamo a vostra completa disposizione per quello che sarà lo svolgimento del corso. Grazie. 
Good. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks also for Sergio Russo. And uh, let me also underline the collaboration we have with the uh, uh, Postal and Communication Police and the University of Padua. Uh, I would now move on with the next uh, set of speakers that are all from uh, important uh, companies. We start from uh, uh, Barbara Poggiali, uh, Managing Director of the Cybersecurity Division of uh, Leonardo Company. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, can, can everybody hear me? Okay, thank you very much. Good morning to everyone and thank you to the university for inviting me and thank you to the institutions for being part of this panel. I'm very honored to be speaking at this important event uh, with many prestigious speakers. Um, just a few words on Leonardo and uh, our cybersecurity division and then I will talk a little bit about the scenario that we're operating in. And, and lastly about people, especially because we're talking to students and new students who will be operating in cybersecurity in the future. Uh, Leonardo, as many of you know, is a name that is, uh, symbolizes creativity and um, innovation. And um, so this is how our company operates. We operate in five dominions, um, which are part of aerospace, defense and security, um, in air, uh, land, naval, space and cybersecurity, which is now one of the five um, dominions. Um, the company is a large company, but you know, not only we generate a lot of sales over 13.8 uh, billion euros, and we have just under 50,000 employees, but I think that a, uh, in information that is very relevant to new students and especially to young people that are starting this new path is to know how many countries we operate in. We operate in 150 different countries, which means that uh, working with us gives you an opportunity to uh, have a lot of international experience. And also how much we spend in R&D, uh, which is an indication of how much um, innovation and technology uh, we invest in. We spend um, 1.5 billion euros a year. Um, this is very important again, since you are part of, you will be part of a um, engineering and, and math department, and we look forward to all the research that will also come out of, of um, this new program. Uh, in terms of our division, uh, we are a new division, we're fairly young in the sense that this division was created by Leonardo in uh, January of 2019, and. Um, because it is Leonardo's intent to focus on security issues. And our mission is to be the partner of choice of domestic and international players engaged on mission critical applications, which require leading edge integrated end-to-end -end security solutions. Um, despite the name cybersecurity of, of this division, we actually um, concentrate also on physical security, uh, secure communications and digital transformation because we have a holistic view of the way that security operates. Um, so we believe that there is more and more convergence between the physical and the um, cyber domain. And we all know that many attacks originate from maybe a physical source and impact um, the logical space or vice versa. So this is why we have put together all these competences within um, one division. Um, we've seen, in fact, a lot of um, issues and, and attacks in, re in the recent past. And we have many systems, for example, uh, one of video analysis, which is based on uh, deep learning, which measures the density of people and objects in physical areas. And in this period of the COVID emergency, we are using this to understand if there is a um, concentration of people, which as we all know, is something that has to be discouraged. We analyze critical situations and support um, our clients in neutralizing physical and cyber attacks. Um, our division is organized by markets um, because we believe that the, the customer has to be at the center of everything that we do. And so we have um, organized ourselves in three market areas. One, which is the police forces and homeland security. Another one, which is critical infrastructure and large enterprises. And the third one, which operates with public administration, defense and international agencies. Um, some of the people that have been on this panel this morning before me are in fact um, our partners uh, many times. 
Um, the division has a um, competence center, uh, which is on cyber security and digital services, which operates two SOCs. SOCs are security operations centers, one in Italy and one in the UK, which are integrated. So again, this is an interesting opportunity for students to be able to see um, different um, international uh, situations. Um, the the um, recent trends uh, that we have seen in our um, SOCs um, have seen, as I mentioned, a, an increase in attacks. And we have seen, particularly in the period of COVID, an increment in the number of attacks on the healthcare sector, um, which are utilizing, in fact, part of the emotions of people because the, the, the words COVID, emergency, pandemia um, are used as uh, basically um, examples where people do searches and then get um, essentially attacked. Um, we knew that this was going to happen in the sense that we could predict it from what we were seeing that was going on in the cyberspace. And then this was confirmed, in fact, in our reports that we've published in the last um, several months. Um, the attacks that have been based on ransomware that our um, threat intelligence platform has seen in the last 60 days, uh, we, we publish these reports every two months, have confirmed this trend. Um, almost 40% of the attacks uh, have, in this period have been on the healthcare sector. At the same time, we have seen an evolution in terms of attacks based on ransomware. And through this, um, scenario, I, I would like to give you a couple of, of topics to, to, um, to think uh, in terms of how your learning might want to be in the future. Um, and three lessons learned so that we can have a framework for looking at cybersecurity. Uh, it's important to, first of all, understand the threat. Secondly, respond to it. And thirdly, be trained uh, constantly. Um, regarding the first step, um, it is important when we're talking about threat intelligence to um, reach information superiority. And what do we mean by this? We mean the capacity to integrate and correlate data that comes from many different sources in order to obtain specific information that can be immediately used to adequately defend or put together um, defense tactics. Uh, tactics. Um, we have been doing this, in fact, in our division this year um, with a intel what we call an intelligence cycle based on a platform of cyber threat intelligence, tools for detection and response, and multi-sandbox. Um, the second aspect of this framework that I was mentioning is the ability to respond, so incident response and crisis management. Um, why is this very important? Well, because we can never be 100% secure. Unfortunately, whatever we do, there, there can be human error, there can be mistakes, and so we can't be um, fully, fully secure. So it's very, very important to be able to react properly um, when there is, in fact, a, a crisis. Um, certainly, um, and other speakers before me mentioned it today, in this period of uh, more smart working, um, we have been more and more exposed to potential um, cyber attacks. And so it's important that the, especially companies and institutions are able to uh, react properly to uh, a potential attack. Uh, this means not only managing the actual um, attack to the technology, but also managing the crisis because it is very important to respond in a timely fashion, particularly for companies and institutions where the, there is not only the risk of um, stopping business continuity, but there are also um, reputational risks uh, because certainly when some company or some institution is attacked, there is a risk of um, uh, reputational damage. So in the, for this part of the, of the framework, we have a um, cyber crisis management plan that needs to be put in place and we help our clients do that. Uh, we help them respond, uh, for example, with the um, what is called the CSIR, the Computer Incident Response Team, and then we help them recover uh, in the post-crisis um, phase. 
The third um, pillar of this framework is training. Training is very important. Um, we have in fact put together a cyber training platform, which we originally developed also with, with the Defense Department. Um, as you know, Leonardo is a partner of, of, um, of the defense and we always try to work with dual mode solutions whenever that's possible. Um, we have a cyber trainer platform, which is in fact an e-learning e platform. And we train um, our um, students and we allow them to do exercises. And the platform also has a security awareness module as well as a cyber simulation model, uh, which we have been, in fact been running with these cyber challenges with a number of universities. Uh, so this is again, very important to continue to do this because you may be very well aware that um, cyber attacks are constantly changing. They're dynamic, they're not static. And so it is important to always be up to date and up to speed uh, with what is going on in the, in the web and in the dark web. Um, I would like to conclude with a few remarks on people. Um, people uh, can be the cause of cyber attacks on the one hand, but also the defenders. In Leonardo, we very much focus on our people. And you know, often when we talk about our activities, there is maybe more interest in the technological content of what we do. But the real drive behind innovation and excellence is our people. So we are always looking for passionate people, um, passionate people and especially young people that will help us drive innovation. Um, I, all the speakers before me expressed um, a lot of excitement and interest in this new course we can never get enough um, good resources to join the company. And I think that's true, not just for our company, but also for others and for the institution. Um, and so we're very, very excited that the University of Padova, which is such an excellent center um, of research with a long tradition, uh, has decided to um, activate this new uh, course. And so we are very much looking forward to meeting the new students when, as they join and hopefully um, be able to start um, internships and collaborations with all your um, projects. Thank you very much and good luck to all the new students that will start um, next year. Thank you Dr. Pajali for being with us today and for underlining how cyber attacks are important. Even now that we are in difficult times with the COVID crisis, uh, cyber attacks are even increasing. And thanks also for uh, underlining the importance of training. And of course, we'll try to give our best contribution. Thanks for underlining the, the, the importance of people. And uh, also, uh, I hope we will have with Leonardo as well with other companies in the panel, but all with the companies we are in touch with uh, our master degree. Uh, for, uh, we're looking forward for a strong collaboration with companies. Uh, thanks again. Uh, we now move on uh, with the next speaker uh, from uh, any Alfio Rapisarda, Senior Vice President Security. Thanks. Okay. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I'm grateful to the University of Padua and uh, Director uh, Professor uh, Rizzoli, uh, Rizzuto uh, and his staff uh, for uh, giving me today this opportunity to be present at this important day dedicated to cybersecurity. For a large company that operates uh, with more than <clears throat> 30,000 employees in uh, uh, almost 70 countries around the world, all around security is a must. In other words, uh, security is not ancillary, but a basic activity of any company that runs a so-called responsible business. Uh, consider that ANI has uh, a presence uh, in all continents of the world and uh, we run more than 500 sites, different kinds of sites, uh, from offices to installations, onshore, offshore, with a, a large network that is interconnected uh, uh, from, from Italy to Africa to, to Asia to, to the extreme far east. And, and to the Americas. That means that we have uh, uh, um, plenty of uh, different technologies that are uh, interconnected and managed 
through a system that uh, most of you know, that is so-called uh, the green data center that we uh, operate uh, from, uh, from, uh, from Lombardia, which is uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, data center in the world. And uh, we just recently uh, integrated uh, the, the super calculator, the HPC5, uh, which is an impressive uh, um, uh, system that uh, is able to, uh, do, to, to, to carry uh, 51, uh, I have to read because it's complicated, 51.7 million of milliards of uh, uh, mathematic operations in one second. That is impressive also, also, also to see. But that means that uh, uh, data driven uh, uh, companies and data and technology driven company have uh, that kind of, of need and that kind of, uh, that kind of infrastructure to run, but also to protect. Uh, by doing this, uh, uh, the company, of course, uh, TNI is, 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 is very keen on that. But uh, this is a message for all companies. Uh, doesn't matter if they are multinational or a small or medium company. Uh, security is is a must for everyone. And the important point is that we need to be fully aware not only uh, of uh, uh, the opportunity for the growth and the success of a company, but we need to have also a full understanding of the risks that this path involves and the limits beyond which no business is justified or even admitted. It means that protecting people and physical facilities from external threats like terrorism, crimes, and social political disruptions, as we uh, have uh, uh, to manage in uh, different parts of the world, and also security in this new era of the digitalization uh, means that we focus more and more on protecting also business information and cyber infrastructures in a proactive and prepared manner. It's a different way, a modern way, a new way uh, for doing security, which is moving from the old stylish uh, physical security only to something that goes into the built virtual world of our perimeter that has to be protected uh, not only through physical, but also through logic and to a systematic uh, approach, uh, which is uh, uh, linked to the cybersecurity world and to the cybersecurity activities. The advent of technology, of course, uh, the automation and the digitization of many aspects of our life has radically changed our approach to this uh, so-called uh, global revolution. Internet itself uh, has reached, uh, I mean, I probably half uh, of the world population uh, around the globe, and all we are hungry for connection, for media and social curiosity, as well as uh, we are, as say, uh, used to uh, live uh, now in a comfortable smart life. And thanks to this uh, device uh, interconnection, uh, we uh, went through, we are going through uh, COVID-19 also, with with uh, with the smart working uh, uh, in a, in a very smooth manner, and uh, uh, this is uh, not only a question of being organized, but also being happy and being uh, prepared to uh, work in a different way. And this is possible only using, of course, devices, uh, connections, and uh, tools that we probably in the past were not used to, uh, to, to accept, or maybe we were looking at them uh, as, a, as an enemy, as a strange and a dangerous uh, thing. Nowadays, uh, it's, 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 it's life-saving. Our companies, uh, the energy sector in particular, which is uh, strongly characterized, as said, by being a business data and technology-driven company, has been engaged for many years in the development of secure environments and infrastructures. But indeed, the digital transformation is increasingly discovering new frontiers in the use of technologies for asset integrity, protection of people, but also protecting the environment. So the environment, so creating new opportunities also through uh, a digitalization approach. But this means that the risk surface has become so large that the company is now obliged to equip itself with robust uh, risk assessment tools 
capable of promptly grasping any sign of threat uh, as much as possible in advance. That is uh, probably the secret and the dream for every one of us. But in that case, if we are in advance, the threat may become uh, a protective tool. So using the threat as something that we uh, may uh, become as a, as a protection for the company itself. All this means widening more and more the technological base uh, on innovation platforms that must be developed uh, following security by design logic, anticipating from the beginning, from the very beginning, protection models, sometimes at the expense of business opportunities. Uh, only in this way, the centrality of cybersecurity will be able to choose parallel paths able to distinguish between opportunities and obligations, between resilience and approximation, between proactivity or reactivity. In other words, defining which is the best way to guarantee value to your company, to the company. And to do all this in the face of external threats of various origins and forms like cybercrime, industrial espionage and cyber attacks, it's necessary not only to continue investing in technology, but also to equip oneself with increasingly sophisticated skills, with resources prepared to face new challenges with the same intuitive and capable tools that external aggressors use. It was said just before uh, by, by uh, Professor Baldoni and by uh, Dr. Fogiali that uh, resources and uh, human being uh, go together uh, from one side, human being is, 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 is critical, is crucial uh, in, in all security uh, organizational systems. But at the same time, uh, the resources that we need to manage that kind of, uh, of system is not only linked to, to the technology. For this, we have IT uh, and infrastructure. Uh, uh, technologies and, and professionalities, but we need also people that understand other people, that understand uh, the, 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 the behavior, understand and can analyze uh, what is going on uh, inside the company and outside the company. This is a challenge, of course, uh, and, uh, and uh, to support uh, the entire ecosystem, of cybersecurity, which is not made only by a single company, but it's a business chain, which involves, uh, uh, of course, companies, uh, citizens, and national and uh, international institutions that at the end of the day are the only one that have the authority and the tools to effectively fight against the distortions and illegalities. Cybersecurity, uh, in other words, means as something that is essential as an enabling factor for the development and the exploitation of digital technology. Uh, and uh, it's, it's therefore uh, linked to uh, future prospects for growth, job creation, and environmental and societal goals. Uh, we see this uh, uh, when uh, we uh, talk about cybersecurity, not only in Italy and in Europe, but also in Africa and in the Middle East, where probably the approach on cybersecurity has a different uh, perception, has a, a different layer of interaction between uh, private and, and public sector, which is in, in our case, in the Italian and European case, something that is paramount and without that cooperation, nothing will be uh, uh, really effective as, as we want. So the big uh, challenge uh, is a shared cybersecurity strategy that should be structures to meet the immediate, mid and long-term security requirements, to strengthen the whole ecosystem, protect the critical infrastructure, and build capabilities needed to ensure, their, to ensure a satisfactory level of strategic digital autonomy, both in terms of new technological developments and of mastering digital technologies to better meet all the other challenges related to the world of cybersecurity. For instance, Internet of Things, 5G, artificial intelligence, and blockchains. The model of ENI, uh, as a proactive company uh, that knows when it's time to change, uh, ENI has been doing this so far for some years now, thanks to a very strong commitment coming from the board and the CEO. Without that commitment, uh, nothing is really um, efficient and, and, and applicable 
uh, as, as, as we want. Uh, we have, uh, thanks to that, acted at a level to modulate uh, new organizational approaches, acquiring skills and technologies that are increasingly cutting edge and above all capable of keeping pace with criminal changes. It's a matter of being prepared. We cannot leave more room for improvisation, and this is still a problem here in Italy and in, in, in different areas also of, uh, of, of corporations and, and medium and small companies. On the contrary, we need to work on uh, the no longer remote perspective of preventing and not suffering. Uh, when we are attacked, it's too late. This is the message that we underline every, uh, every time we need to talk about cyber defense, about cyber security and investment in that sector. Uh, what we did in our, in our model uh, was to uh, making security in a modern vision, aiming not only to protect the physical spaces, as I said before, but also the virtual spaces of the networks and the data that travel in them. Uh, we made a cyber defense organization, which is uh, a mix between uh, IT, cyber security, um, professionality and, and, and organization, and uh, cyber intelligence, which is made by, uh, by security through uh, cyber security analysts that work uh, in specific on the threat management model, which is, as I said, uh, uh, the uh, first and the most important layer on understanding where you are on how vulnerable is your system. The layer that we follow are very simple. Uh, proactivity means threat intelligence models, so analyzing information, analyzing data, analyzing uh, events around the world, not only affecting you, but affecting others and understanding how that uh, that threat, how that risk uh, may be putting uh, and jeopardizing your company if you are not adequate in, in organization and technology. And of course, developing uh, reactivity, which is not only uh, react when it's too late, but you need to reduce response time, which is also uh, another way to uh, get uh, the disruption uh, less, less, less uh, complicated less expensive, but also uh, to guarantee business continuity and disaster recovery, you need to practice. This is something that we forget. We have a lot of procedures, we have a lot of technology, but then we forget to train. We forget to understand through uh, drills uh, what I need to do and what I can do if it happens. And uh, when we practice uh, together with all the other members of the crisis management team of the company, we learn something. We understand there is something to improve, that there's something to change. And procedures become effective when you are uh, doing uh, this kind of activity, which is uh, really not expensive, is not time consuming, but it's something that people forget very often. Uh, training and awareness, uh, raising was, was said just before, uh, it's not only a question of, of getting uh, new resources, new skills, new competencies from the academia or from, uh, from the market, but it's also a question of training people. Uh, company uh, employees uh, are the first layer of security of itself and of the company. If people understand that that's, uh, the own behavior may be a very crucial point when it comes to uh, accepting a risk, uh, then uh, people understand how to avoid uh, the risk itself. And uh, sometimes it's, it's easy to, to, to show people uh, what not to do or what to do, but at the same time, uh, it's things that, uh, it's something that remains in mind and becomes more effective, sometimes more, uh, more, more, more positive than, uh, than uh, 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 an expensive uh, tool that uh, we can implement uh, or an antivirus or something like that. Uh, this uh, point is, uh, is, is, is very crucial for us and we invest hours and hours uh, from uh, the top level of the management uh, down to the last employee, to the receptionist and the people that in the supply chain are working with us. 
uh, this is something that I wanted to underline. Of course, compliance was said. We need to be aligned with with uh, rules, with uh, with procedures. And in Italy, as uh, Professor Baldoni said before, uh, we are we have done a good part uh, at European level and at the Italian level. Uh, sometimes Italy is seen as the, the one that goes uh, less uh, less speed uh, has less speed in doing things. But in uh, in in the matter of cybersecurity, there is lot of things to do, of course, but I think that we have done uh, uh, very important steps ahead in the in the in the in the in the ruling and the liabilities and the cooperation uh, between private and and uh, and public sector. Uh, partnership is therefore something that absolutely we consider uh, the 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 win-win uh, point because uh, we can have uh, whatever we want in terms of technology, in terms of expertise, but if we work alone, uh, we are lost. Uh, working in synergy and sharing uh, with all the, the partners, uh, uh, the regulatory, uh, regulatory and operational part uh, is uh, something that is uh, uh, giving uh, the add-on on all the, uh, the, the goals that we have uh, it is not only to protect the, the business interest, the private interest, but uh, is to protect the national interest in all forms from any risk that may arise. Uh, in Italy, as I said, we are, uh, we are working very hard to ensure a robust cyber secure environment. Uh, I think that there is uh, uh, some points, there are some points that we need to, uh, to, to strengthen which is not only linked to the cybersecurity, to the European cybersecurity industry, of course, but we need to promote trust, not only between member states, but also between the industry and between the industry and, and, and the public sector. When it comes to cybersecurity and to cyber uh, risks, uh, trust is something that is uh, always uh, um, a question mark. And uh, this is uh, a point where uh, we are working very hard, uh, uh, at least at the industry level, to make sure that whatever is the the event, whatever is the the incident, we uh, we are we are dealing with is something that if it's shared, it's a it's a defensive way to avoid uh, to be to be attacked and to avoid further attack. Uh, facilitate crisis management. I say this is uh, is, uh, is is the is the other point. Uh, where uh, bureaucracy cannot be uh, working together with cyber. It's absolutely the opposite. So uh, dealing with, uh, with a flexible and a very uh, strong uh, uh, crisis management means doing it uh, rapidly, quickly, uh, of course, compliant, but at the same time, avoiding uh, extreme bureaucracy that is uh, time consuming at the, at the end of the day gives uh, an important uh, uh, opportunity to, to attackers that are absolutely uh, without any problem, uh, without any rule and without uh, uh, need to work uh, during daytime or nighttime. They have no shift. They can work when they want and from where they want. Um, this is all uh, just to underline what was said also from other uh, colleagues uh, here today is that, of course, cybersecurity is not an option. Uh, I think it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for, for students. It's an opportunity for, for companies. Uh, it's, it's, it's a need for, for a new approach on, 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 on our, our cyber life, uh, where uh, uh, the uh, technological aspects is, 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 is dealt by by, 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 by competencies that are already existing, already defined. What we need to understand is that cybersecurity goes also through uh, cyber intelligence, through conoscenza, knowing what is going on around the world. And this is, and this is something that gives the opportunity also to students that have a, 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 a different uh, non-technological background, just to uh, just to underline how important is, for instance, the geopolitical uh, analysis uh, also when dealing with cybersecurity. It seems uh, there seems to be they they seem to be two different things. 
far away from each other, but it, it is not. Because if we have uh, uh, a region in the world where uh, uh, there is a political trouble, or there is a conflict, or there is a, a struggle which is uh, driven by economical, social, or, uh, or political interest, uh, or military interest, uh, uh, cybersecurity is moving on. People may take advantage from, uh, from that situation for entering and profiting in terms of cybercrime, but there are state-driven uh, interests that may, uh, may damage uh, third parties, uh, and uh, energy sector, of course, is one of the most important sectors uh, in each country, and, uh, and they can become a target even if they are not really the, uh, the target. In, in this sense, uh, cybersecurity is something that brings in uh, uh, all the actors that are uh, around the table today, the virtual table uh, today, so the private sector, the public sector, uh, army, uh, police, uh, uh, and uh, and the academia and I really thank the University of Padua for for this initiative and of course we uh, may support uh, as much as possible also as uh, ENI. Grazie. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Apisarda, for sharing the view of uh, the important aspects of uh, cybersecurity for ENI. Thanks a lot. Uh, I would now move on to the next speaker, which is uh, Dr. Fabio Ugoste, Head of Cybersecurity and Business Continuity Management, Group Information Security Officer for Intesa San Paolo. Hello, everybody. My name is Fabio Ugoste. I'm the Head of Cybersecurity and Business Continuity for the Intesa San Paolo Group. I'm also the information security officer for the, for the group. First of all, uh, I'm sorry not to be in presence, but uh, because of the importance of this event, I wanna, with this video, I wanna ensure my contribution. So today, I will, uh, I will talk about uh, uh, cybersecurity challenges and opportunities. Yeah, I have some slides. We will see what does it mean to uh, um, do cybersecurity in a group like Inter San Paolo. We will see which are uh, our, uh, our priorities, uh, our, uh, how we, we are organized, and which are people and skills uh, we are looking for now and also in the future. First of all, uh, Intesa San Paolo Group uh, is uh, an international group uh, with uh, more than 40, 40 billion of market capitalization. Of course, uh, this is directly connected to the share uh, value. Uh, we are leader in Italy with more than 12 million of customers, uh, more than uh, 3,900 branches, uh, and a market share of uh, 12%. We have a strategic international presence of about, with about uh, 7 million of customers and more than 1,000 uh, branches. About in this group, uh, about the cybersecurity presence, uh, we can say that, of course, uh, we are, we have people in every uh, place around the world in which we have uh, branches or uh, banks. Altogether, we are um, about 220 in the headquarter, the parent company, in the parent company, there are uh, 150 people that manage uh, cybersecurity and business continuity. Something about uh, our mission, values, vision. Uh, we define and enforce groups cybersecurity policies and the guidelines. We define groups business continuity solution in collaboration with the IT department. We foster strategic initiatives and investment on a risk-based approach. We define solution uh, to, to protect uh, the, the, the group, it define and implement solution, provide an integrated guidance, con coordination and control model on all the uh, entity of the group. 
We safeguard the business data and information of Vitesse San Paolo, enable and support the digitalization of products, services, and process. We manage cybersecurity incidents, crises, and emergencies. And uh, in this period, we are managing uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, emergence. At the end, we create and dispense a risk-based culture across the organization. I underline the cyber culture. That this something really, really important we are working on. Cybersecurity pillars of Intesa San Paolo, which are our, uh, our driver, our pillar. We have four, uh, four main, um, main drivers. Fundamental excellence. That means uh, uh, try to reach the highest level of excellence, doing the, the things that we know from ever that we have to do as fast as possible, as better as possible. Sensitivity and dynamism means uh, to develop, uh, to, to improve. Uh, the, the ability to detect and understand even the weakest signal of cyber attack as soon as possible. Culture and awareness. I, I, I already underlined uh, that this is a very crucial point. Awareness, cyber culture, training is an enable, enable or enable of cybersecurity by design. In the end, uh, group governance. We have to, to be able to, to give uh, the same level of protection to the whole uh, group uh, with an extended governance in order to improve uh, the cyber resilience and the cyber posture. Few words about uh, our organization. We have uh, an organiza organization divided in three main uh, groups. The first groups, the first group uh, under the responsibility of Giorgio Cusma that manage the uh, cybersecurity business continuity strategy and group governance. In this group, we have people that manage uh, strategic intelligence, cyber culture, control, risk, uh, risk analysis, uh, and uh, that work uh, to implement uh, what we call cybersecurity by design. The second team is managed by Enrico, um, Ezio Barbero. It's dedicated to the project, to the technology, to the architecture. In this group, uh, we choose, select, uh, um, develop uh, solution, architecture, project at the group level. The third team, managed by Angela Formazari, the team dedicated to the services, to the most uh, operational part. In this team, we have uh, the ethical hackers, the hunter, we have uh, the threat intelligence, uh, the anti-fraud management, uh, and so on. In our uh, activities, uh, we have a constant uh, monitoring, constant evaluation of, of, about uh, which are the relevant risk uh, scenario that we have to manage not only now but also in the next month. This is a strategy, strategic intelligence activity. In this moment, uh, the, the picture that we have uh, is telling us that uh, the, the, the priority worldwide are the regulatory evolution. Um, around the world, there are constantly a lot of uh, regulation that are rising, and uh, a, a group like us that is present in different countries, we are in the United States, in Europe, in Japan, in China, and so on, we must be sure to be completely aligned with the regulation in the different countries. So this is uh, something that we are doing, but uh, it's uh, something that we have to control very, very um, strictly. The insider risk is uh, an old uh, 
risk scenario that the banks uh, have. Cloud adoption. Cloud adoption is a, a strategic target. Everybody, I think, have uh, of you have read uh, in the newspaper the memorandum of understanding that we have signed together with Google and the team. So also for us, it's a strategic uh, target. From the cybersecurity point of view, we have to manage, keeping in mind that uh, the cloud enlarge the surface that we have to, to protect, to, to, to cover. Then we have the customer frauds uh, as a risk, a risk that is arise a lot uh, during the coronavirus crisis uh, because of the phishing. We, we see worldwide an explosion of the phishing attack uh, because of the um, vulnerability of the people. We have the data breach that uh, is a consequence of what we have seen uh, till now. And social engineering, also this is uh, directly connected to the customer frauds. The critical human factor, again, I told you uh, the cyber culture, culture is, a, is a key. The human factor, the human factor is a key. Uh, so we, we can say that in cyber security, we have to think uh, at um, the, the, the security, the strength of a, of a group is like a, a strength of a, of a chain in which uh, the, the weakest ring is the one that gives uh, the total strength. So human factor we can, can be considered the weakest link of the chain. So we have to, to work a lot on, on, on this, also because we constantly see that uh, the, 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 all the frauds that uh, happen are caused because uh, people, customers, gives credential to the frauders. So human factor is uh, the, the key point. So we can say that cybersecurity challenges uh, uh, worldwide are uh, cyber culture, culture, I already said, data protection, that means uh, have, um, the right data classification, data processing, mapping, uh, and uh, multi-factor authentication. Cybersecurity control is fundamental. Implement uh, um, a strong, uh, a strong, uh, a strong controls at the group level, because this is the the, the, the insurance about uh, the posture, the, the, about the protection, about the solution that we have implemented. Business continuity, it's, uh, it's something on, on, on which uh, we have worked a lot in the, in the past. We use it uh, in these weeks uh, of uh, coronavirus uh, crisis, but in these weeks we understand that uh, the technology the smart working give us the chance, give everybody the chance to think uh, the business continuity probably in a little bit different way in the future. So this will be something on which everybody in the world will work on. Physical security, of course, cloud security management, uh, I told you uh, already. And the shadow IT. Shadow IT is another important thing because uh, Shadow IT means uh, in the in an organization, I can I can have uh, uh, a lot of IT solution or devices that are not uh, official, so are not uh, controlled and are not uh, under the monitoring of the of the company. This could be a an important vulnerability point. Now, let's talk about what uh, probably interests a lot to the, the, the audience. Cybersecurity careers, uh, I think that everybody read uh, every day on the newspaper, on the news, uh, on the social. 
that the cyber industry is growing like any other. Uh, the business, uh, large or small, rely on data, rely on digital. That means that uh, cybersecurity, so the, the way to, in which I protect that data, the, the digital process is fundamental. There are different numbers, but uh, around the world, uh, we can say that millions uh, of unfilled positions will be in the next month, uh, will be present in the next month. In Europe, uh, there are uh, statistics that say that there will be a skills shortage of more than 350,000 workers. So, which are the, the people we are looking for? Which are uh, the, the, the skills? We need people in all the teams uh, I, I show you before. In the governance role, that means uh, risk management, business continuity, disaster recovery, strategic intelligence, cyber culture. In technical roles, uh, so cybersecurity architect and engineer, cybersecurity application and software security. And talking about uh, technical aspect, all the new technologies, so artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, crypto analysts are all uh, skills that are uh, very, very important in cyber security. On the operational side, uh, cyber intelligence, uh, threat hunting analyst, uh, anti-fraud specialist, uh, vulnerability assessment penetration tester, forensic professional, ethical hacking. All these uh, uh, roles uh, need need now but in the future more and more will uh, in, in all this role we will need uh, uh, people that at the moment uh, is really hard to to find on the market we with uh, we search for specific skill but we search also people with uh, some characteristics some uh, we can say soft skill. We, we need people with courage, with the social impact, with the continuous learning appetite. Many of these aspects are something, are features that can be acquired and developed through learning and training. Because in the digital world, more than in the past, it's important to have uh, all these uh, characteristics in order to be able to make things happen in the, in the, in the organization. Going a little bit uh, more deeply, we can, uh, we can say that we, we search for people. These are characteristics, not only fundamental for cyber security, but, but also for many other uh, worlds. But I can say orientation to the results, ability to manage time workload, uh, extraordinary situation, the ability to identify solution, uh, of course, uh, fluent English, uh, and so on. I underline the, light, the, the last, uh, uh, the last uh, line, user experience. Today, much more than in the past, also the cybersecurity uh, specialist must keep in mind that they have to, to think uh, to very sure, very secure solution, but really, really easy to use. Because we, in the digital world, we must be able to give to the, to the customer, to everybody, solution uh, very, very, very easy, but also in the same time, and this is a really, really difficult part, also solution uh, very, very secure. So this is uh, uh, what we are looking for. This is all. Thank you for your attention. And uh,
I can say wish you all the best uh, for this uh, new really important experience. Thank you. Bye. Thanks also to Dr. Ugoste for sharing the view uh, of the cybersecurity of Intesa San Paolo. Uh, we now move to our last speaker, Dr. Uh, Riccardo Barrile, Chief Information Security Officer from Ferrovie dello Stato Italiano. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Professor Rizzuto. It's a real pleasure for me uh, today with you, not only to share our um, um, approach uh, for cybersecurity, but also to share with you uh, the skills that we need uh, for cybersecurity in our organization. So um, I, I have prepared a very short presentation for you, and I can try to share my screen uh, to Sorry, one, only one moment. Uh, okay. So, do you see the presentation? Okay. Um, I want to try to uh, to uh, uh, sh uh, share with you our path uh, for cybersecurity. Uh, as our rates, uh, uh, we are considered a critical infrastructure of the country, and uh, for this uh, reason, we need to use uh, specific uh, security measures uh, to assure uh, the security of our passengers and our customers for the data, but all the, all not, not only, uh, also for uh, their uh, travel to be able to buy our tickets online and uh, to use railway infrastructure at the maximum uh, its possibilities. Uh, and um, in this uh, chart, you can find the typically uh, this classic descriptions of uh, critical infrastructure. And the main goal is uh, assure the business continuity of this uh, critical infrastructure because uh, only a few minutes uh, uh, of vulnerability of this infrastructure um, damage the, uh, the, country, the country systems. So uh, I want to give you um, an idea uh, of uh, the number of the, our group. We are a large group that operates in various transport contexts. Um, we are actually we are uh, over seventy four thousand employees, um, with uh, over nine nine thousand trains uh, per day, and we carry over six hundred million passengers uh, every year. Um, you can consider it more. Uh, actually, we sell over eighteen percent of our of uh, our tickets uh, on uh, our e-commerce website. And um, in recent uh, years, uh, we have activated a strong process uh, of digitalization for over all, all our services. So, well, unfortunately, uh, the cyber risk is a product uh, of a, uh, a digitalization process, and therefore uh, we are attacked for different reasons uh, and by different actors, uh, um, such as activism, cyber crime, insider, ter cyber terrorist, also for uh, industrial espionage. And the typical threats uh, are DDoS attacks, uh, phishing in, in particular mode in this uh, period uh, under the crisis uh, uh, COVID, malware attacks, uh, SQL, injections, uh, SQL injections, but also defacement. Uh, and the impact uh, on our infrastructure um, typical are um, damage of our services uh, or um, reputational damage uh, also, but uh, not solely, also industrial espionage. Um, to response uh, um, uh, at this uh, um, 
uh, these threads, uh, uh, in the past, uh, we created a centralized structure dedicated uh, to the cyber security of the group. Um, and actually, it's located within the Central Corporate Security Department. And uh, in this chart, you can see the actual organization. Uh, uh, we are a team composed of 33 uh, uh, internal persons and management uh, at the internal of the uh, core activities. Uh, we have also uh, external support uh, from uh, certific certified uh, partners, uh, but not uh, for core activities. Uh, essentially, the, our uh, secu cyber security structure is composed uh, uh, on four micro areas. Uh, uh, info sharing and compliance uh, is dedicated uh, to issue of policies uh, and guidelines uh, for the group and uh, uh, to the sharing of information between the various group structures uh, and with external organizations. Uh, more is dedicated to the awareness program by e-learning platform for our employees and uh, to maintain uh, the compliance uh, with the actual law uh, in order to sci national cyber security. So uh, we have also the engineering and service uh, management. Uh, this area is dedicated uh, to design and uh, operational management of our security solutions and uh, to introduce the concept uh, of uh, security by design on every project of the group. Uh, um, for infra infrastructure, for data network, uh, uh, for application, in general, uh, on every ICT project. Uh, on uh, cyber security operations, uh, um, uh, in this unit operates uh, cyber security teams, uh, an internal computer security emergency response team, and uh, a lab. Uh, for cyber security. Uh, um, cyber security operation center is dedicated uh, um, at uh, security monitoring, uh, event correlation, anomaly detection and classification, triage and security assessment. So uh, I want to underline that uh, our latest uh, generation of cyber security operation center was designed by uh, uh, internal resource. And um, we have, uh, as I said before, we have also an internal computer security emergency response team is dedicated uh, to incident response, threat intelligence, security advisories, uh, and uh, also IOC and forensic analysis, uh, and more uh, relations uh, with institutions, agency, law enforcement, uh, law enforcement for threats uh, and vulnerability and critical uh, security incidents. Um, inside, we have uh, a lab for cybersecurity dedicated uh, to malware analysis, uh, code review, uh, security testing uh, of relation uh, analysis team systems uh, equipped with uh, artificial intelligence. For last, uh, we have a project and program area is uh, dedicated to project uh, management and planning over all IT security projects, but also uh, to the management of the structures budget. Um, the financial management uh, of the structure is very important to make uh, the best use uh, of a company's economic, uh, economic resources uh, in this uh, sector, and especially in a big company as uh, Italia Railway. Uh, our uh, model, uh, risk-based, is uh, uh, inspired uh, and, uh, on uh, in USA NIST framework, uh, uh, because the USA NIST framework uh, work, um, framework identif identify five uh, um, area, five area identify, protect, detect, uh, response, and recovery. And uh, we tried 
to translate this uh, concept uh, on our uh, structures. Um, um, our model is active uh, 24 hours and seven days, and um, we have, in fact, uh, identification, identification, protection, detection, response, uh, recovery area is located on three different levels. Um, the first uh, level of analysis represents our first line against the threats and identify the threat and assign a severity for uh, applying the first protections. The second line uh, is dedicated to the, to the threat uh, detections. And finally, we have uh, an internal uh, computer security emergency response team dedicated to response and contrast uh, the attack. All phases uh, of the incident management are uh, very tracked by uh, an automatic framework that allow uh, to have uh, the incident report in real time. The computer security emergency response team is also responsible uh, uh, more for activating the escalation procedure towards internal management and for sharing information with the uh, government office. It's a, um, the structure is a very important and continual and dynamic uh, uh, evolution. Uh, but uh, we, need, we think uh, the human factor is very important uh, for us. Uh, for this reason, uh, um, we try uh, to uh, um, summarize uh, um, uh, the, uh, the skill uh, what, that we need for our structure, and in particular uh, on info sharing and compliance area. We usually recruit on the market uh, ICT security government specialists, typically more uh, specialists on the uh, process analysis. And in secondary engineering and service management, uh, in general, we recruit uh, security administrator, security architect, and security engineering. And uh, for our clue uh, area, uh, we recruit uh, um, these figures as uh, security operation center analyst, analyst in the security desk, a cyber security analyst for first level and second level, cyber threat intelligent analyst. Uh, we have also penetration tester malware analyst and the cyber security incident manager responder and specialist for uh, ICS SCADA security engineering because security engineering um, we have uh, uh, also for uh, uh, project uh, program area, the project, man uh, project manager uh, uh, specialized uh, also on financial uh, uh, path. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, the, uh, I think it's very important to share with you these uh, uh, skills because uh, I, I, we think the connection with the academic uh, field is very interesting to have uh, uh, ready uh, the new professional because uh, they actually it's difficult to recruit uh, professional uh, in the, uh, around the, on the market. Uh, my colleague Alfred Rapesarda said before that the human factor is the key, the solution. So we, we uh, improve uh, also the specific program of awareness uh, uh, for uh, our employee and uh, for our uh, um, management. But the challenging is uh, the human factor, the, the learn, the, the, to have the new professional ready uh, to uh, able to ready uh, to operate into our uh, structures. So I want to close uh, my short presentation with a short uh, movie uh, of our structures. Um, and uh, I try to start it and uh, okay.
Thank you for, uh, sorry, uh, stop share. Thank you for your attention and thank you for this event. If you have any questions, I'm here and uh, ciao tutti. Thanks also to Dr. Barride for the nice view of uh, cybersecurity for uh, Ferrovie dello Stato Italiano. Uh, we are already uh, uh, beyond schedule, but I would like to, to have a question for, for our panelists. Uh, possibly uh, try to be uh, very fast in your answers so we can uh, catch up with the time. So the question is, uh, what are the advices uh, you would like to give to students that are actually embarking now to this uh, Let's say education program, but in general for uh, for a career in uh, cybersecurity. Uh, is is there any uh, from the uh, panelists that want to take this uh, question? Uh, Dr. Rapisarda from any? Yeah, oh, it's a good question. Complicated to answer because uh, the world of cybersecurity is certainly a very important and constantly growing employment sector. We, we told this uh, before and finding skills is not uh, such easy and uh, it's equally difficult to retain all the resources that are attracted by uh, very aggressive uh, market competition. We as a company, but I think everybody does, invest a lot in the development of resources and losing them uh, is never a good thing. Uh, uh, we ask uh, ourselves uh, often, uh, what should we do to keep them with us? Uh, people uh, who are passionate about their job and are proud of being part of the company, they do not always give importance only to money and career when they make a choice. Uh, and working in a, in a good, attractive environment means that uh, you are in a community where you find your identity, your respect, your skills are duly recognized. It's never uh, only a compromise. It's uh, it's a choice of life. Uh, it's not only for experts, but also for uh, new young students that are uh, jumping into into the into the into the working life. Uh, also, change uh, might be stimulating. Uh, myself, I changed uh, three times in my in my life, and uh, I I don't want to deny it's interesting. Uh, but uh, normally, I guess that there is a reason why you change uh, or you choose to change, which is maybe only uh, also money, uh, money uh, or, or, or career development, but probably people don't feel comfortable. Uh, and this is a fault uh, of an unhappy cohabitation. Uh, it's like wife and, and the husband. Uh, it, it happens. It's, it's a fault of everybody. But um, the market is so, is so open that uh, uh, you find a lot of, of people. Uh, you don't find the real one that you want, probably. Uh, but I guess that there is a lot of room, uh, especially in the profiles that we look at as, as, uh, as company uh, in, the, in, the, in the universities, with people that uh, come out from... Uh, from, uh, from uh, their studies and, uh, and I ask them, uh, please jump into the world of work with the passion and the desire of, of those who never want to stop learning, uh, to listen or to, to make experience, to gain experience. This is helping everybody to integrate and to grow seriously everywhere. Uh, Thank you. It's, it's a question of efforts, doing your efforts uh, at all times. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, I don't know whether uh, Dr. Pajali from Leonardo want to add uh, anything about advices <coughs> for students. Yes, um, gladly. Well, we is is quite big. We have eighteen hundred people in it, and as I said, we do work in um, not just in cyber but in other aspects of security. My word of advice to students is always um, to try to get as much experience while you're studying, working as well. Um, I was trained in the United States, and this is something that uh, we, we grow up with. Um, and also, uh, catching on, on what uh, Dr. Pizarra said before me, I don't think there's anything wrong with change and changing companies. I've certainly changed. Um, it's, it's a growing experience. It's, it's enriching to work in different environments. So don't be fearful of, of change. 
Thanks a lot. Thank you. And thanks to, uh, again to all the speakers, all the prestigious guests that we have today to, for this uh, introductory event for our new master's degree.